Hello, world. We're on camera now. Hi. Live yeah. in Technicolor. <laughs> um, Looks like there's a little bit of a lag. Okay. Um, Y'all hear me all right? Yep. Yeah. I hear you fine. Seems to be lagging. Um, we, Hello, people of the world. People of the world. Sorry. Today, we are looking at Sierra Nevada Torpedo Extra India Pale Ale, introduced way back in 2009. Now, this beer has a package date on the back of the bottle, and it says packaged on May 22nd, 2015. That's what mine says. Mine says... Mine says... March 18th. June 26th. Ooh. Some no. of y'all have some fresh ones. May 26th. May 6th, my daughter's birthday. That's my birthday. What do you know? March 18th. Happy birthday. March 18th. Uh-oh. <laughs> <That'll laughs> it's fine. only four months. I've That's got an right. age on this. That's all right, because uh, someone did a video where he compared um, the drink uh, Enjoy By, and he had a year-old bottle and a new Ooh. bottle, and it tasted the same, he said. It smells <laughs> fine to me. Hey, Jay. Yeah. Mine is a... Uh, a year old almost today. I didn't well, buy it today. All right. It smells like a Christmas tree. Now, <laughs> let me introduce who's with us today first. From the West Coast, well, I'm going to go East to West this time. From New England, we have Eric. Hello. From the Mid-Atlantic, we have Lee from New York. Hi. Formerly New, New Holland, New Netherlands. But that's been a good while. We have Patrick from Pennsylvania. I prefer I would prefer if you said from the great beer drinking city of Philadelphia. <laughs> Use the Michael Buffer voice, I would like that too. The great alcoholic I mean the great beer drinking city of Pennsylvania. Uh, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Always sunny. From further out in the west we have John Sharon from Indiana. The Hoosier State. Oh, oh, I feel so terrible. We have <laughs> Friar Tuck from Connecticut. I skipped right over Connecticut, and that was a grave insult. Constitution State. But I didn't block Friar Tuck, unlike <laughs> people who accidentally did that the other night, but that was a mistake. Okay, now, from Fine. the West, we have Beer Cub and Michelle Stitches, and no one else showed up. And up uh, from California, we have Keone. Hey. Who has his own beer channel? And Eric has his own beer channel, and Fire Tuck has his own beer channel, and John Sharon has his own beer channel, and Lee has his own beer channel. Now, and no other Westerner showed up. Tanya said she was going to try, but she uh, is in Las Vegas, and there was some confusion about the time. So hopefully, she jumps in. And then from Louisiana, we have me, and I have a shirt, and I'm not selling it. Hello, me. Louisiana Beer Reviews. Hey, can I buy Ooh. one? Get your shirts, guys. All right, now, <laughs> let's drink this little number. Cheers. Cheers, clink. It the chaim. Oh, the chaim. Now, that means cheers, huh? Damn good. Now, 7.2% uh, alcohol, pretty hefty, eh? Yeah. 65 IBUs. Pretty bitter. Yep. Um, who in in this group has not had this beer? That would be me. Wow, that's really interesting, Patrick. So you're going to do the honors now. This beer is produced in North Carolina and in California. It it gets very high ratings on Beer Advocate and Rate Beer, especially I think Beer Advocate. Ninety nine from the bros. Oh yeah, ninety nine out of a hundred. Now, so Patrick. You, what do you think about the Sierra Nevada Torpedo? And if you look on their website, they explain why they call it Torpedo. That's the uh, Torpedo Hop, apparently, from my understanding. It's a, no, it's a device that infuses hops into the beer. Okay. I stand corrected. Uh, just, to, uh, just to be fair, I'll just repeat if I probably said it before. I'm not really an IPA fan, so knowing my point of view... To start out with, I'll just preface that. Um, yeah, I just hate the first couple sips on it. It's um, it has that bitter taste. It's got that 
Christmas tree sort of aftertaste to it. That really why I'm not a big fan of IPAs. Um, it's got a really dark, cloudy sort of amberish color. Mine does. Um, as far as the taste goes, it's it's okay. It's not over the top as far as a lot of different IPAs that I've had that I really just couldn't get through. Now, would this be something you'd drink on an everyday basis or is it just like a specialty one-time thing? To be, to be quite honest, I, I'd probably never buy it again. <laughs> <laughs> but we appreciate you being honest because getting on here and lying wouldn't do a whole lot of good. No, but I mean, the only reason I bought it was for tonight and to give it a shot and be fair. But that being said, Torpedo number one out of the tube missed the uh, missed the ship. So it's not your thing. You would rather drink Schmidt. I would much rather have a Schmidt or name your generic American beer. Okay. Um, and by the way, when I was driving through uh, Pennsylvania last month, I couldn't <laughs> find Schmidt and I couldn't find Peels and I wasn't pleased. They're... Um, in beer distributors, you can usually find them by the case. Now, if you were looking for a six-pack, oh, it might be slightly that. harder. Let me retract that. I did see Schmidt at a beer store, or it's so-called so a restaurant, but not really, on U.S. Highway 1, right over the border from Philadelphia, literally feet from the Philadelphia city line, across this little creek. Okay. I've been to that place many times. Uh, they had Schmidt. Oh, do, you, do you remember what the name of the place was? Uh, Suds, I think. <laughs> yeah, I go there all the time. I know exactly what you're talking about. That place never closes. It's right where Old Lincoln Highway intersects one, Highway 1. That's technically my town, Ben Salem. I'm a couple minutes from there, my house. Suds, yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't going to pay ten ninety nine for a six-pack of Schmidt's. No. Is that what they wanted? Out. Something like that. I said, oh, no, I don't think so. I've had it before. You know, if I would have, and I've done a video review, if I would have found peels, I might have bit, I might have bit taken the bait. Okay. Now, uh, we'll try to focus on this beer, not stories about us driving around buying beer. Okay. <laughs> that, driving around buying beer is okay. Driving around drinking the beer, that's a different uh, story. Yeah. I would never do that. Oh, bless you, Keone. I thought I could get away with it. Now, um, um, up to New England, to Connecticut, um, Friar Tuck, what is your impression? Don't you find this beer is a little darker than your average IPA in the appearance? Yes, and in, in the appearance, I do. I, but I've had much bitter, much more bitter, I should say, IPAs than this. Oh, yeah, but I'm talking about the appearance. And it's got a yes. lot of snow. Yeah, the appearance is a lot darker. But like I said, taste-wise, this this really isn't as bitter as some other IPAs I've had. This one's pretty. This one's a lot more balanced than other ones I've had. Oh yeah. To me, it looks like the colors mixed with orange and copper came together. Yeah. yeah. To make this color. That's a perfect amber. Perfect description. Amber. A cloudy copper. That's how definitely I would call it. Definitely is cloudy. It definitely has sediment in it. Just like with the um, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, it is not sediment rich, but it's yeah, got a little bit a good amount of sediment to it. Now, Friar Tuck, what do you think about this beer? Do you like it? Uh, yes. Um, I, I kind of like a hoppier IPA, to be honest with you. So this one falls in the mid-range for me as to likability. But, like I said, I, it's been a while since I've had this. It's probably been a good five, six years since I've had this. And it, it's not bad, but I, I've had better. Golly. But I tend, I tend to like a hoppier IPA, to be honest with you. You're now, crazy. Now, what about... I find this interesting. Patrick doesn't like it because it is hoppy, and Fryer doesn't like it because it's not hoppy enough. <laughs> I'm an IPA. I want a hop bomb. I'm sorry. I, I, I like all ranges. I, I'll drink everything from malt liquor to, to American adjunct lagers. I enjoy them all. Um, if I'm going for an IPA, though, I want something that's a little more, I don't know, West Coast style, I guess, grapefruity, that type, citrusy hop. So you this really want something intense. 
Yeah, if I'm going for an IPA, yes, definitely. But this isn't this isn't bad in the price range. It, you know, it's not that bad either. Would it be like eight, nine bucks a six pack? I think. I bought my six pack for seven dollars and forty nine cents. Yeah, that's a really oh, decent. I'm going to tell you what mine was. Hold on, I'm going to tell you right now. Cause I took a picture of it because I had to make sure I didn't screw this up. I think I got my bomber for three and change, which was at a local gas station in my town. So probably not the best deal, but. Yeah. Twelve dollars and forty nine cents. How much? Before tax. How much? Twelve dollars and forty nine cents. That's highway robbery. That's yeah. nothing. Mine was fourteen dollars for my six pack. Oh, New York <laughs> just got held up. Somebody got held up. Who sold you that, Jimmy the Jim? And to tell you the truth, Spence I was here. I was surprised I found it because I I happened to go to the local uh, supermarket, which all now within the last three months starts to sell beer now. They changed the law in Pennsylvania. Right. Make a long story short, I've stopped there looking for stuff for these reviews a few times, and they haven't had. Them. They have a decent selection, but they haven't had what I was looking for. And today they did have this. And then, of course, it had the 12.50 price tag to go along with it. That being said, I did see that they had a Sierra Nevada crisp lager, which I was half tempted to grab also, but I wasn't about to spend. Another twelve dollars or whatever it was for that also. Wow, I don't live up your guys' way. Now, so Fry doesn't like it too much because it's not intense enough, and then Patrick finds it's too bitter and piney and Christmas tree. Now, um, Eric, um, I like this beer. Do I absolutely love it and adore it as far as IPAs are concerned? Um. I'm kind of in the middle of the fence on that one, but you know, I that is my favorite style of the IPA, and I really think that this one is a good one for both the people that really are hop heads. I think I think a hop head is going to really person that really really likes hoppy beers. I think they're going to like this one, you, even if it's just for its high drinkability, even minus the fact that 7.2 percent. I think it's got high drinkability. I think it's very well balanced between the malty sweetness and the hoppy bitterness. And I also think that um, somebody that doesn't, and, and I know Patrick was saying what he said, but even I think if somebody doesn't really like IPAs, they might find that this one could be one that they might enjoy. So I would say if you can get it for a better price than some people did on this review panel, I would definitely say go out and try it. Or if you can get a single of it, try it that way. Yeah. So but it's definitely not it's definitely not an English style IPA. Oh, not, oh. no 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 no. The oh. American style seems to like to play around with your taste buds a little bit more. Yeah, I'm thinking of English IPAs like Samuel Smith's India Ale and um <clears throat> all those they're so much different. They're not that hoppy. They're not that bitter. They're hoppy but they're not bitter. Right? I, I think I think if anybody's had even if anybody's had the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, which is still a pretty hoppy, not even an IPA, just a pale ale, you will kind of understand that that whole cone, kind of a hot flavor, yeah. that Sierra Nevada. The, I like the pale ale. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's a modern classic. Absolutely. Yes. Now, Lee. Yep. In, in Queens. And I haven't been to Queens in a month. Um, Congratulations. <laughs> Is that a good? I went, to bad the Mets. I went to see the Mets. Um, um, went to see them lose. Yeah, welcome to Red Sox Nation. But uh, what do you think about this beer, Lee? Um, to be, I'm more on Eric's path for this beer. Um, I don't necessarily think that an IPA has to be overly the top hoppy, you know, straight in your yes. face. I, I like how it's – like, you can still taste the caramel sweetness in this, which is definitely a plus for my side. I love IPAs. I mean, yeah, I do love the over-the-top IPA, like, grapefruit and all that. But I can appreciate a well-balanced IPA. Stop for a second. So, Keone, it's, it's uh, reverberating on your side because I see the green uh, volume indicator on yours, so you might want to check on that. I'm sorry, Lee. Uh, so yeah, I was just saying how I'm more on Eric's point where like it's a really well balanced. You know, you could still take the malts, the sweet caramel, sweet caramel on, it, on it. You know, that's pretty much how I feel. It doesn't uh, IPA doesn't necessarily need to 
have like, you know, let's see how much hops we can throw in this brew right now, kind of. Yep. So that seems to be a trend today, though. Would you consider yeah. yourself a fan of it? Me? I love the Torpedo. Yeah, I love Torpedo. I'm always bragging about Torpedo. If, if people watch my videos, I'm always wearing that out. I'm like, yeah. I use Torpedo as a baseline, though. Mm -hmm. It's like, if I'm paying, okay, so you got to remember, I can get Torpedo for seven forty nine a six-pack when it's on sale. Eight ninety nine normally. If I'm drinking an IPA that costs me way more than that, yeah, it better be good. Better be at least as good. I mean, it better be really good yeah. because otherwise, I'm going to rip on it. Mm -hmm. It's like when I drank uh, New Belgium Schiff Lager. I was outraged. I went berserk. Yeah. I said, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Stop everything. And I'm in the store, and the owner, I'm sure the store owner is like, why are you coming in the store and ripping on a product that I'm trying to sell? Yeah. Well, that was the deal we made. The deal we made was that I was going to get up there and tell the truth. Not to mention that they don't sell the product anymore, but it was a uh, shift lager. And I said, man, look, oh. I'm paying seven forty nine for a six-pack. And it is not as good as Coors Banquet, which is three ninety nine for a six pack of pints, which is what the sale was at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go crazy and rip on it. So I went berserk, you know. So I think price should not affect the taste, but price does affect right. the overall and value consideration of it. Exactly, exactly. So, and you ha and you have to be you you have to have at least even even if you find a store, you have a store in your area that will that that sells singles. You'll have a better you'll have a better sense of of what we're talking about in the value department when you get to try a lot of different beers. You'll know what a good value is. You'll know what a bad value is. You know when you're getting taken advantage of in the money department after you've tried the beer. It's kind of hard for us to really say you need to go out and try the beer now and, and expect that you're either going to like it or you're that you're not going to like it. You just need to you know use this for as a baseline guide to go explore beers like we all do. Right, and who wants to pay Cadillac? <laughs> beer, beer. The hell? Now, who wants to pay? <laughs> Sorry, folks. Uh, who wants to pay Cadillac prices and get a Chevrolet? I don't. It ain't cool. I don't drive, so. Now, uh, he doesn't drive yet. Now, <laughs> um, uh, let's see. So we're going to go out to Indiana. John, what do you think about Sierra Nevada torpedoes, sir? You know. I I'm gonna say this. I mean, I give three dollars and I think twenty nine cents for this beer before tax. So it's 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 comparable to what Fryer paid up there for this twenty four ounce bomber. I I think that was a good price what I paid. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you hear about all these people all the time saying you know you can't age an IPA because they're gonna they're gonna be bad and they're gonna just be terrible. But mine was born on uh, six nine or fourteen. I just bought today. And from what I've seen, from what you guys, is, you know, I mean, it, it's it's comparable to what you guys got. I mean, I got the same cloudy mine that you guys got, and uh, I mean, it's, it's an enjoyable beer. I don't think, you know, IPAs go bad. That's just my opinion. But uh, overall, I enjoy the beer. New, new. John, I think that's what. I think. I think. Uh, I think that's what. Oh Lord! Oh Lord! You think of what? Major echo. Major echo. Oh, really? Hang on a minute. I'll turn down a little bit. We had a major echo problem. Major echo problem. Yeah. Last time. But uh, overall, time. I today, really enjoy today, this beer. Today, I think today, it's a, today, today. I think it's a good I beer. I think it'd be a good transition myself. beer for people. I mean, if you wanted to move over to an extra IPA beer, uh, I mean, you can definitely taste the citrus, the crystal hops in it, the magnum hops. You definitely get that ale yeast in it. I mean, to me, this this I know Fryer likes a bigger, hoppier beer. To me, this is about as much hop as I want to go to. Much over this, and I'm I'm out. I, I'm not a big IPA fan, but uh, yeah, it's got. But I really enjoy it. this beer. I've not had it. I've not had it since 2012. It's the first time since then. But uh, wow. I mean, wow. it, it's a typical West Coast dry IPA. I think. Yeah. What's the extra What's mean the in extra, extra, mean? IPA? extra IPA? It's got more alcohol it's got than normal. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, echo. 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 Yep. Yep. Hey, let me tell you something. Hey, let me tell you something. 
I was doing a. I was doing an echo. Well, screw this. Well, screw this. I don't hear the echo. Okay, good. Okay, that's a good, good sign because it's not the guy showing up on the play out. Um, I'm just going to try this, see if the echo's gone. It must be gone now. I was doing a hangout with. Uh, yeah, it was John Sharon. He had his mic up too high. Huh? I was doing a hangout, actually an in-service with uh, Google Plus, and um, they were showing us how to do different things, and they had a major echo issue. They could not get it fixed. Really? I'm like, why? wait a minute. Wow. It can't just be us. Because the lady was like, I, maybe I shouldn't be saying this. You might notice that my channel will disappear. But, um, <laughs> but it's the truth. And the lady was saying, like, I'm going to show y'all how to do this. This is very important, important, important. Here, here, here. How, 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 how. You, 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 you. Do, 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 do. And I'm like, wait a minute. You're the you're the people that are running the show, and your show ain't running too good, too well, you know. So yeah. oftentimes it's not us. It's right. The system. But um, I think that you solved the problem. I think John was having some major echo issues. Uh, some uh, he was having some uh, looping. But um, I think a lot of times this there's an overemphasis on drinking IPAs really fast because the companies want you to buy a lot of beer. I bought an IPA from Scotland called uh, Hardcore IPA. Oh yeah. Now no doubt it's about what nine or ten percent alcohol. Good dog. Yeah, triple IP or something like that. They make a punk too, don't they? Yeah. Um, that's more like 5.6. It's more like your standard IPA. I remember enjoying punk. I don't yeah. think I tried hardcore. I don't think you'd like it. No. Oh, wait. You, you no. wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Because you like the really hard, the really hard. Go with the echo. Um, um, but I bought it and it was five years old and it still was good and strong and vibrant and the hop bitterness was there so so much for the uh drink it quick uh, yeah but ipas weren't even really weren't, weren't designed in the first place for for fresh drinking they were designed for being able to make it through ocean travel exactly mm -hmm. exactly hops so, preserves so, the beer. so the whole idea the that whole idea that they have to be drank fast. Kind of goes against the whole original um, conceptualization of IPAs, which was simply throwing a bunch of hops for preservative reasons. And by the time it gets to Bangalore, India, or Chan Chandernagore, India, or the Lakadive Islands, or the Andaman Islands, or uh, Calcutta, it'll be preserved, but you know it's not going to be super intense. But that's mm. the way. Now, uh, yeah, craziness tonight in Indiana on Google Plus. Now, um, um, let's see, where are we? Um, let's go out west. How about Beer Cub and Michelle Stitches? We are not ignoring you. We're just going a different direction this time because usually we go from west to east. What do y'all think about Torpedo? Um, well, we we did a uh, we did a uh, oh we're oh, echoing we're again. Wait, I'm gonna. Uh, it's John. It's got to be John because every time he unmutes it. It's uh, major issues. Okay, start talking. Is I'm it going. working now? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's got it. We did a IPA review last week with Eric, so we discussed the whole IPA phenomenon in in extensively. Um, and just Patrick, just so you know, I used to hate hoppy beers. I mean, I hated hoppy beers. I yeah. like them now. So do revisit it every three to six months. You will find that your palate might change. There's just like a little switch that went off in my brain about three months ago, and all of a sudden I was like, hey, this is good. So um, I like Torpedo. I think it's just a good basic IPA. It's not any over-the-top extreme. I like Hop Czar better, which is an Imperial IPA. I think um, uh, that's just my personal preference. I like a big malt to go with a big hop. Yeah. Um, this has got nice malt, but maybe not quite as much. Um, in general, though, it's a nice drinkable beer. I drink it again. To me, it's the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale with just more hoppiness. 
that's kind of, I mean, I'm not doing a side-by-side -side comparison, but as I was drinking it, I was thinking, this kind of reminds me of a pale ale, and then it was sort of like, duh, yeah, Sierra Nevada pale ale. Um, so that's, you know, but I would drink it again, and especially if I can get it at a good price. I wouldn't I've never pay had hops well. Pardon? I've never had hops or Who makes hops or Bridgeport. Out of, out of Oregon. It's very good. Uh, so, um, Widmer, doesn't Widmer make an IPA? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would appeal to y'all. Anyway, uh, so Michelle, you're finding this is sort of run of the mill. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's good. It's not it's not a wow out of the park. It's just a nice basic IPA. To me, it's a good example of a West Coast IPA, especially. Um, a more um, northwest coast IPA. I think of those as being a little more piney. I think the ones that come out of California to me, well, this may be California, but the ones that I think of as California to me are a little more citrusy and florally, and this one has some of that pineiness to it, not just the grapefruit. Yeah. That just may be me and my where my taste buds are tonight, um, but that's kind of how, how I the IPAs, and it's just like any other beer, when people say IPA, you get this whole wide range of things. So if you try one and you don't like it, don't go, ooh, I don't like IPAs, because it just may be the hops that are oh, in yeah, that one. They're so different. They are. Yeah. They're very different. Yeah. So. There's going to be a lot of styles out there that, that, that take a little bit of just getting used to those kind of flavors, like a lot of beers from, you know, um, IPAs to me, Took me a while to get into, and a lot of Belgian beer took me a while to get into because they're just so funky and different and unique <laughs> flavors. And hello, that beer. I, I had to drink some more. Hey, Michelle, um, have you ever had the Liberty Ale from Anchor? Have we? Tried it. I think I think we've tried it, but I don't recall it. That was the first India Pale Ale made in America, and it started in 1975. So it's sort of like sort a, of like. A, uh-oh. An interesting one. Um, but it's very well, I, guess, I guess Ballantyne would, would uh, precede that, right? The original Ballantyne IPA? Yeah, but then that faded away a long time ago. You right. know? So I would say Anchor Liberty Ale was like the first modern IPA from okay. 42. Right. Now, Beer Cup. Yeah, uh, I'd probably echo John on this one. Uh, echo John? Yeah, <laughs> ironically, yeah. There's a lot of that going on. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is at the upper end of my tolerance for hops, but it, that being said, it's it's a very well-made beer, which that's one of the, there's two things I really appreciate about Sierra Nevada is their consistency is, uh, I've never had a bad beer from them, no and their pricing is fair, and I appreciate that, and there's none of their beers that to me are my go-to everyday beers, right. but... They, all their beers that I've tried are beers that I would not hesitate to buy again because I know what I'm getting when I buy a Sierra Nevada product. And uh, they just they make really good beers. And to me, this has a, enough malt balance to it that even with that 65 IBU, I, I can still drink it and enjoy it. But yeah, it's not something I'd buy every week. No, but Beer Cup is sort of like a mac a macro beer now, right, Sierra Nevada? Yeah, it's yeah. it's bordering on that for sure. You need it everywhere. I think Samuel Adams. It's definitely a macro beer. Sure. Yeah. Not that I'm not saying that in a pejorative term, no, uh, in a pejorative not, manner. Yeah, that doesn't specify. Well, that doesn't specify that they use rice and corn to be a macro beer either. People get that no. confused day in and day out. Actually, I'm drinking a macro beer right now, and I'm quite enjoying it. Um, I was tempted to grab Santa Claus Classic when I went back to the Ooh, fridge for the second yeah. round, but I said to myself, "That would be really bad." It <laughs> might be the center when you wake up. That would be a tragic mistake. Um, <laughs> now, we're going way out west, but not way, way, way out west to Hawaii, but we're going out to California, and we're going to talk to somebody who used to be in Hawaii, and I've never visited Hawaii, and I've never visited Alaska. I've only been to 48 states, but Keone, what do you think about this beer? Um, I kind of agree with um, Michelle and John at the same time. Um, this is about at my limit 
especially when it comes to hoppy beers, because this is pretty beer, bitter to me, especially the first few tastes of it. It was like almost like my lips were about ready to pucker. It was so bitter. Um, and I noticed back when I first moved to California, I was very sky's the limits when it came to the hops beers. But now I'm kind of more subtle. I like maybe a, a, a what do you call it, a pale ale or maybe a, a IPA, something more a little bit on the more mild side. But for the most part, this beer is a really good beer. It has a lot of flavor and characteristic to it. And I would totally recommend this beer. And I think when I did a review on it, I gave it a good rating as well. So, yeah. But very bitter, though. It, it like, slaps you in the face. It's so bitter, to me anyways. So yeah, I'm, getting, I'm getting almost the total opposite from Keone's. I mean, it is a pretty hoppy beer, but I'm, I may, maybe I just have a, a, a more of a liking to IPAs. It's not going... Slap, 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 yeah. what are you doing, son? To me, at least, it's not. So, Eric, you don't think that, that Keone and Beer Cub and Patrick would enjoy Hop Stupid or Hop the Mum? Um, maybe not Hop Stupid. Hop the Mum, I think, is one of the most balanced IPAs in terms of its malt-forward character. Okay. I think they might enjoy Hop the Mum a lot. Now, everybody talks about Pliny the Elder, but you know what? I've never had that beer. I've never had it, never had the pleasure of finding it, and I think it's just a very hyped-up beer. I don't know if it's a really, really good beer, but it's got a lot, a lot of hype on the Internet. Yeah. Now, I did try... Look at this man here. Yeah. Now, I did try... I, <laughs> I did try um, a Russian River beer called Supplication on July 4th, and that was really a uh, dynamite beer, man. Um... I was going crazy over it. I was like flipping out if you watched the video. But that was like ten beers in and um Oh yeah. <laughs> that was funny. So like, so like people said you had really um what did they say you had done a lot of prep before? I said I did do the prep, but it wasn't by design because when I went to the guy's house he was like, I want you to come to my house and try this homebrew that I made. So I'm thinking I'm going to go drive out there and try a homebrew. And it was really good. You know, I've only had a few homebrews. I had his homebrews, and I had homebrews from Charles Lewis, who used to join us, but he had to start doing some family stuff, so he may come back. But um, And his was really good, too. So I said, wow, this homebrew is really good. He said, okay, well, now let's start drinking. I said, well, what are you talking about? So um, he said, well, we have, like, nine more beers lined up. I said, oh, <laughs> I said, you do realize I have to drive back. He said, ah, oh, you'll probably make it all right. I'm thinking. <laughs> I said, it's July 4th. They have checkpoints everywhere. But So anyway, but his wife brought out some uh, some uh, fajita flowers and a bunch of cheese and uh, ground nice. meat. So it worked out fine. It absorbed a lot of that. But uh, And when I drove back, I was fine. Or I suppose that I was. But I do believe <laughs> As a disclaimer to the people from MAD that monitor these videos, I do think everything was fine. But um, Let me ask you all a question. What, what would you pair this beer with food-wise? Spicy food and chicken wings. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Throw it up. I don't know. Yeah, spicy know. food. Uh, I, would say, um, I would say... Um, Shrimp Creole or um, uh, fried shrimp uh, seafood, a, 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 a shrimp po' boy from uh, Mr. Ed's or um, wow, sounds damn good. Cheese, <laughs> damn it! How about, how about a cheese? How about a cheese pizza? Pizza beer, you can never go wrong. Chips and looks all like side. gorgonzola. Cheese pizza with a lot of um, red peppers on it. Yeah. 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 It would be good on tap of uh, just a standard old pub with hot dogs and sausage and hamburger. Go, go good with this beer? I think some buffalo wings with some, like, really vinegary mm -hmm. kind of hot sauce on top mm -hmm. of that bar barbecue wings. That would be hey, awesome. Amen, Keone. Cheers. <laughs> what about... I prefer blue cheese, but... What about red jambalaya with, um... Mm -hmm. on three, are we are we gonna review food next week? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always down for food. I do, I, I do notice that most people are are, are proposing uh, really spicy food. Now my my opinion of Sierra Nevada Torpedo, and I finished mine. I'm on Miller High Life right now. Um, well, I really like it. 
when it first came out in 2009, I bought it. I was very impressed, and I said, wow, this beer's got a lot of character. Um, you know, it's not like profoundly, awesomely tremendous, right? Yeah. It's not like I fall out the chair and roll around on the floor and scream and holler and say, oh, wow, I'm drinking a torpedo. <laughs> the bro's but, beer. Uh, I don't know, 7.2, you never know. Now, when I, oh, no, when I drank uh, uh, Stone Double Bastard and drank the whole 22-ounce bottle, 11.2, then I rolled on the floor. But I stayed on the floor. I didn't do a lot of rolling. I just... <laughs> but um, I think Sierra Nevada Torpedo is... Like I said, I use it as my baseline. It's very inexpensive relative to other IPAs. So if I'm going to pay $7.49 for a six-pack of Sierra Nevada Torpedo, is it the greatest IPA in the world? <laughs> no. I don't think it is. But I think it's really high. It, it's high up there. So um. it, it, it's, it gives me a reference point. So I go and I, you know, you know how I do. I go shopping around and I buy all this different uh, expensive beer. So if I'm buying expensive beer, it doggone well better at least measure up to Sierra Nevada Torpedo. And if it can't do that, no point. I'm paying three times the amount. Yeah. Can't do that. I'm gonna rip its guts out. I mean, that's fair, right? You're being yep, definitely honest. <clears throat> and to bring that point up, I'm drinking um, Miller High Life right now. Well, <laughs> that's funny. I'm going to make a point. I'm about to make a point. This beer was uh, $9.99, $9.99 for an 18 pack. Is it the greatest beer in the world? Rub Obviously. it in, buddy. Obviously not. Miller makes no claim. Miller makes no such claim. Okay, but if I'm drinking a lot of uh, lagers and I'm paying a whole lot of money for these lagers, they better be better better than Miller High Life. And a, and a lot of times, I pay a lot of money for Imperial. Yeah, that's right, Lee. Nine ninety nine and eighteen pack. <laughs> that's ridiculous. So I buy. You know, I, I'm buying these craft. I I'm moving south. You know, I buy these craft lagers, and I'm paying all kind of money, and I'm reading the ingredients list, and they're saying, oh, we use all of this stuff, and we age it, and we. We we went we went to that and we met up with Monk and all this. Stuff. So it's like, wait a minute, you did all that and your beer is not quite as good as Miller High Life. Yeah, I'm gonna get angry, you know. So it's like Miller High Life is a good reference point. And Miller, I mean, not, it, Michelle brought up a topic a few weeks ago that made me think, and I and I use this often when I'm thinking. She she brought up Kraft macaroni and cheese. Okay. <clears throat> It's the same thing. If I'm going out to a restaurant and I'm getting something that's not quite as good as Kraft macaroni and cheese, I'm getting really mad. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, Wait absolutely. Yeah, that's that is not a baseline for mac and cheese. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not, and that was my point. <laughs> so if you're getting worse than Kraft, you're really getting Kraft. John. <laughs> if I'm getting less, the Kraft mac and cheese. I'm getting up and walking. Well, you know, I think y'all, I'm not as um, vociferous or um, as antagonistic as y'all are about Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. I think Kraft Macaroni and Cheese is an okay, mass-produced, highly um, processed food product. Okay? Fine. But if I'm going out to a restaurant, if I go, to, if I go out to a restaurant, I'm paying $21.95 for a seafood platter that has macaroni and cheese on the side, it yeah. better be way better than Kraft macaroni and cheese. Not yeah, what are you talking food. about, Willis? But <laughs> some of lobster in that macaroni and cheese at that point. <laughs> exactly. I, I totally understand what you're saying, and that's why with me, I can't go and buy a lot. I don't go out and buy a lot of beers I don't know much about that are at high prices because I got shut down a few times where I bought beers and it just tasted horrible. Yeah. And that's what makes me kind of afraid to go and explore, you could say. Honestly, for me, this torpedo is going to be either a beer that sits in my fridge until I can pull it off on somebody when they come over, or... <laughs> Send it over. It sure. will, it's going to turn into a few beers in, and, eh, we got this left. I can't taste it anyway. So. 
With this, though, I feel like this is All right, excellent. Now to get off of all the ancillary, where I went and what I bought and when I bought it, you know how you, you start to get deviate, start to get deviationist. Um, the last point we're going to make is, well, actually, we're going to make two points. Sec, first point. Next week, we're looking at Victoria. Yeah, um, I can get I'm that. Very, yes. I'm very excited about Victoria being a lager because it's been on the market since 1865, and that's no joke. Second point, I want each person to go down the line and tell me if you would buy this again, like, you know what I mean, like, just not for a review, because yep. Briar Tuck's got every beer brand on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Damn it, buy it again to drink on your own without any kind of particular purpose. So, uh, going to, uh, um, what else? okay, Friar Tuck, would you buy it again? I would. Like I said, th this falls in the mid-range for IPAs for me. It just is an extra IPA, but I'm, I'm leaning towards more like a pale ale, like every, well, a couple other people said it tasted similar to their, IP, their pale ale. Um, I, I, yeah, I'd, I'd buy it again. As long as it's decent price, you know, under eight, nine bucks a six-pack, I'd definitely get it again. But you wouldn't be out searching for it. No, I, yeah, I wouldn't go out of my way. If it was, you know, Five ten minutes from my house, I'd definitely buy it. I had, I had some friends over having a barbecue or something like that, and they're like, "Oh, they would be like IPAs. I'd grab a six pack of it, or a bomber or two. So, in other words, it's like the bush beer of IPAs. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Interesting thought process. Eric. Um. Yeah, I would totally buy that beer again. There's not even at nine dollars and change. I, I find I'm still getting a pretty good solid product. I wouldn't pay. 11, 12, 13, 14 for a six pack of it. Absolutely not. Nor would I um, go out of my way to try to find that beer. But it's a really good beer. I think that a lot of people that aren't even hop heads could, they may find they like that beer. Even people that are really big hop heads may find it to be a nice, relaxing, refreshing style of an IPA. I'd say I would buy it again. I can't argue with that. Mm hmm. Very refreshing, by the way. Uh, how about uh, Lee? Yeah, I definitely buy this again. I, I said, you know, this is actually one of my go-to beers, to be honest. This is one of the beers I usually drink. If like, just I usually buy these just to drink when I come home from work all the day. You know. Man, that's really interesting that you say that. So it's like you're one of, one of your everyday drinkers. Yeah, I like this one. Wow, Patrick. I know the answer there. <laughs> well, to go to the other end of the spectrum, this is probably the last torpedo I'll be having. <laughs> that was a bomb, wasn't it? I think that answers the question. Uh, John did not... Oh, John, what do you think? Yeah, to me, the, I'm not a big hop head or an IPA fan, but for an IPA, will I buy this again? Yes, I would, because I think it's a... It's a I'm like Friar Tuck. It's a mid-range IPA. It's an it's an enjoyable IPA. I mean, I like the citrus hops. I really enjoy those. But uh, yeah, I mean, to me, this this is the buy again beer because it's not an overpriced IPA. I think it's a, a, just an overall good IPA. I mean, for for mass-produced IPA like this is, I mean, it's a good IPA. And yes, I'd buy it again. Okay, that's a good uh, comment. Um, Eric, did I ask you? Certainly did. Two thumbs up. Buy it again. Okay. Um, I'm trying to keep up. Um, Beer Cup and Michelle Stitches. Yeah. Yeah, I would buy it again on occasion. Um, I think I've had it three or four times now in the last however many years it's been out. So that shows you how often I buy it. But it's always been good. I had it on tap once. It was very good on tap. But it's not something I buy, you know, even monthly. You know, maybe, maybe once a year, once every six months, something like that. Yeah, that sounds like me. Michelle? Okay, I have three things. One, yes, I would happily drink this again. Number two, when we were discussing food pairing, it completely slipped my mind, but my dad's grilled, barbecued chicken 
and this beer would be like dying and going to heaven. <laughs> so I would definitely say it would be really good with a slow roasted grilled chicken and then in the last five minutes you coat it in a really gooey spicy barbecue sauce. Oh yes. Oh, nice. And number three, this oh. is a <laughs> this is a public service announcement for those of you who have not seen it yet. If you have not, you must go to Jay's channel. You must look for the video <laughs> where Jay and his daughter Elizabeth review this dark beer. Jay, you can tell them which beer it is. Elizabeth's reaction, her facial expressions, <laughs> and her attempt to verbally describe <laughs> this beer had me rolling on the floor with laughter. I know what beer English you're talking major, about. Major, give her a beer that she cannot describe verbally, and we get things like a witch's bottom <laughs> when the moon is full. I mean, it is so <laughs> hilarious. So Isn't if that you haven't seen it, go watch it as soon as you're done watching this <laughs> review. Isn't so that one that's one of the with normal? Meat? That's yeah. the one. That's the one. Yeah. Isn't Repeat that the one that, that you wanted to radio with normal? Uh, what do they call it? I can't even say it right. This beer, I tell you. Um, Roman numerals. What? Isn't that the one she wanted to rate it with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wanted to use Roman, Roman numerals because she couldn't even give it yeah. an A or a B. Or <laughs> yeah, that's the one. I remember watching that. B I I. <laughs> All right, so Jay, tell everybody clearly which review that is so they know what to search for. Yeah, that was Thornbridge Hall Brock Braccia. That was a great review. I like that video. <laughs> Two enthusiastic <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> she had to score it with Roman numerals. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that was wild. Um, Braccia, yeah, that was sent to me from uh, Germany by a guy named uh, Arthur Kulik. Nice. And this is interesting, really, because wow. he watches my videos, and one day he sent me a private message, and he said, oh, um, how do you like the idea of me uh, sending you for the uh, beers from Germany? And I said, Arthur, I mean, what are you talking about? He said, oh, I wanted to send you f from the beers in Germany a bunch of beers, and it's going <laughs> to cost me a lot of money. And I said, well, how much money is it going to cost you? Oh, it would be the hundred dollars in the wow. that range. I was, wow. like, no. I was like, don't do it, don't do it. He was like, oh no, um, I I was wanting to see the um instances of you drinking the beers. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I've had beer shipped in Belgium, but it didn't cost that much. <laughs> I, I was like, Arthur, I don't know about this, but he was like, he insisted. I said, okay, so he sent me these beers. No, no, John, but these were very expensive beers. They're like eight, nine dollars a piece, right? Some of them are like twelve, thirteen percent alcohol. I said, okay. So he sent all these. Broken, though? He sent fourteen beers, and this was an elaborate situation. He was contacting me every day. Here's the uh, the shipping number. So they came in. And three of them, three of the beers were destroyed. The uh, shipping company dropped the beers and broke them. That sucks. Oh, he was, I was bad, you know. But uh, eleven of the eleven of, out of the fourteen came in. He said that's okay because he sent he sent some beers to California once, and a hundred percent of the beers were destroyed. So, um, Jay, this has got to tell you the quality of your videos if people are sending you beers from worldwide. You know, I mean, <laughs> right? That's correct. So yeah, and like from Japan, but um, Plus, your beer companies, Miller and now those guys are sending you stuff. That's true, Miller, um, Fuller's. Um, oh, sweet, Fuller's. Did Dosecki send you something, or Modelo? Well, actually, Modelo sent me. Um, that was Modelo with the with the, uh, the barbecue spices and that. Right. Yeah, they sent me a cutting board. A, a, an array of spices from the spice the spice house in uh, Chicago. They sent me um, a cutting board, um, four tulip glasses, gold rim tulip glasses. They sent me. Um, now you, now so. you, work for, you work for Miller and Modelo, don't you? No. I, don't <laughs> I think this review panel needs to get some free stuff to review with you. Yeah. Yeah. They sent me. They sent me fifty dollars. They sent me fifty dollars to buy the beer. So. They said, yeah, they came to me and said, well, now this is funny. They came to me and said, hey, if we send you a bunch of money and free stuff, would you review the beers? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't do that. 
twist my arm, you know? You like it anyways, right? The only qualification was I said, look, I'm not going to get up there and lie on Modelo, Negro Modelo, and say how wonderful it is. They said, yeah, but we watched your videos. You already bragged on it. I said, that's true. So <laughs> now the brewery the brewery sent me three beers, and uh, I told them, I said, hi. I said, I'm not going to get up there and lie about how wonderful they are. And the guy, uh, he said, uh, believe me, you're going to love it. And he was right. It was awesome. You know, those three beers from the brewery. So, yes, uh, Friar Tuck, you're right. I have gotten a lot of free beers from uh, people, just viewers, which is fantastic, and uh, from actual companies, yes. Um, so that's kind of neat, you know, because I'm not doing it for the money or to get free beers. But then, on the other hand, I don't tell people, no, don't send me free beers, you know, and it's all bonuses. Bonuses is right. Now, that, started, that, started, that, started, that started in 2009 with Schlitz. Schlitz was the first company that ever sent me money. They gave you stuff, they gave you stuff for a tailgate, didn't they? At a college football game or something? Yes. Uh, Schlitz <laughs> had a program where you could sign up. So I talked to the guy, and he said, well, all you got to do is go to the games and take photos of you and your friends drinking Schlitz beer at the games. And then he said, we're going to buy all this beer, and you give it to people and let them drink it. So, of course... You know, everybody was like, oh, yeah, this is really good, you know, and um, so it was really fun, you know. And then uh, Schlitz got bought out by uh, Metropolis, and that was the end of that program. But it was fun for uh, the whole football season of 2009. But my, my opinion of Sierra Nevada is that I do like it. Um, I have always liked it. I've never said anything negative about it, and I would definitely buy it again, and I'm almost certain I will buy it again. And got, to, to end this video, yeah, I got one. Let me let me ask the question real quick. I got one opinion. What? Okay, two things. What? Okay. Um. Who? Me or, or John? <laughs> go ahead. Keone. John. Keone. Keone. Oh, okay. Um. Yes, I would buy this again, but I would not session it. Well, especially not in the summer anyways, because this is a beer that I like to sip and just enjoy the characteristics and everything it has to bring to the table. Um, for this summer, I'd rather prefer drinking some Budweiser, some natural ice. Man, it's getting hot, and I just want something that I could Getting? Just drink and not just waste <laughs> it. You know what I mean? Don't waste your taste buds on? Right. I, I definitely agree. I drank the Sierra now. What is that called? Sierra Nevada Torpedo, and then I drink the High Life, and I had to wipe my face, and uh, <laughs> I'm, having, I'm having trouble saying the letter S. But um, <laughs> John, okay, I got to I got to ask Friar Tuck a question because I see him hold up a natty or not a natty daddy. I saw my post a natty daddy on a roll up a heady topper. <laughs> so I've had the heady topper about a half a dozen times. So which one do you prefer more, the Heady Topper or the Sierra Nevada Turbo? Heady Topper. Yeah, yeah Heady Topper. I would agree. I think it's a good beer. Oh, hi, Jay. You're back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really enjoyed the Heady Topper. Yeah, I've had it plenty, plenty a couple times, too. Alrighty then. <laughs> so, hey, Eric, as soon as Jay gets back, we'll uh, cut the video. I know, right? Eric? Go ahead. So you, you got the ballast grapefruit? Yeah, I've had this one forget when I bought this, but this has been maybe a month or two in the refrigerator, and I know it. And again, and maybe that's not old enough, but I'm not noticing that the characteristic of this. Are you drinking it now? Here. Yeah. I don't notice that the characteristic of the hops are have diminished in that time I've had the six-pack at all. I was going to say, I've, I've got one. If you, if you ever want to do a review, I want to let me Yeah, I do have one more of these. That would be an awesome review. I don't know if anybody else. I mean, in general, I don't know if anybody else has ever tried any of the that no, was point one. from San Diego. Oh, I want to get one of those. Real soon. Like they're like twelve bucks a pack. Uh, that's yeah, what makes yeah, me nervous, but I really want to try them. 
Have you tried that habanero one yet? Yeah, I tried the habanero one, and and, and initially it tasted like a really, really good Sculpin IPA, and then yeah. you notice like three or four seconds later, all the burn from the habanero is in the back of the throat. You don't notice it on the palate. You notice it yeah. in the very back of the throat, yeah. which is quite yeah. a unique exactly. sensation. Did but, you like that, Eric? Or my first person. First. Yeah, I, I got it. like that. I liked it. I, do, I want my chilies in my food and my beer with it. I don't well, want well, the know, chilies in the I beer. Was, uh, you know, I was at this craft beer bar in um, Tucker, Rhode Island, and I noticed that my buddy's eating the chicken wings, and I tried a chicken wing, and then I decided I'm going to wash down the chicken wing with a habanero beer, and I'm like, wait a minute. Why am I eating the chicken wing when I'm drinking a liquid chicken wing? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a good descriptor. Liquid chicken wing. Yeah. Yum, yum. Yeah, the, I would probably, out of those three, they make three of them. They make this Sculpin Grapefruit, um, which is just with natural grapefruit flavors. Um, the Habanero Sculpin, and then this, the normal, everyday Sculpin yeah. IPA, which I think look is what I, probably what I got yesterday. a double I IPA. 12-pack for six ninety nine of six ninety nine for that 12-pack. Yeah. That is wow. That's pretty good. Mm, Jay must be having bad technical issues. Right? I know, right? We're yeah. just stuck on Please home. stand by. Uh, sorry, I was back on. I don't know what. I just thought, well, I'll jump off for a while, jump back on, see if it, it clears seems up. To have, it seems to have worked. Whatever okay. you did. Yeah. Google if you want to do it like, right. one, if you want to do it one day next week, uh, let me know, Eric. Absolutely, that'd yeah. be cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it always works if you jump back on and somebody doesn't block you. <laughs> exactly. Well, exactly. While we're stuck in purgatory, I must say, John, that Sorry was a good video that you made just, uh, the other day. I need to go try out those um, root beer beers. Here, hey, Ronald just said uh, I can hear everyone, but my stuff crashed. Oh, this video will never stop recording. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul says that top Google... Top? Google probably cut Jay yeah. off after he well, just let me, off air. Let me be the beer host for a minute here, if I may, and bring it back to some sort of logical topic. If anybody had to pick one Sierra Nevada beer that they've ever had in their lifetime as their favorite one that they would pick up more times than not, which one would it be and why? Uh, I'm going to say probably the – I'm going to say the Torpedo. Just because I, I agree a little bit. Maybe 